some last second information from the, the Elmwood parents. Rams of Tenora come and representing the GMC, the Green Medals Conference, while the Royals of Elmwood come and representing the NBC, the Northern Buckeye Conference. Last time these two teams met was in 2021. A 3-2 Rams win here at Tenora. Last season's game at Elmwood was rained out. Rams are 5-3 versus Elmwood since 1999. Tonight, Signs Excavating first pitch is set for 5 p.m. Signs Excavating offers a variety of excavating and trucking services. Signs Excavating can assist with your general excavating services, demolition, and emergency repair work. From driveways to ditch clean to site prep, Signs Excavating is here to assist. Signs Excavating team is committed to doing the job right, on schedule, and on budget. Based in rural defiance, Signs Excavating serves all of Northwest Ohio, providing reliable and affordable excavating services for your home, business, or industrial property. Full offering of excavating and trucking services, including stone hauling, trenching, and demolition, land clearing, and drainage work. Signs Excavating is the official pregame sponsor of the Tenor Rams Live Spring Sports Season. For all your excavating needs, call Josh, 419-769-2290. For your trucking needs, call Brad, 419-481-3738. Of course, you can visit them on Facebook or go to signsexcavating.com. 2023 Rams are off to a 2-0 start. Wins on the road last week at Macomb, a 8-6 win. And on Thursday, a 8-3 win over Lipsick. Currently have the Rams undefeated. Quick look back at last season. Rams of Sonora finished at 21-6. Captured their fifth straight GMC title. Sonora finished in a three-way tie with Antwerp and Wayne Trace. Rams made it all the way to the district finals before losing to Ottawa Hills by a score of 4-0. Rams did graduate eight seniors, replacing the eight graduated seniors will be hard, but four seniors are returning to the Tenora Rams for their final season. Graduated from last season, Jaden Bergman was second team all GMC, Bryce Bailey, Cole Camaso was first team all GMC and actually made the all state team, Nolan Schaefer first team all GMC, Tristan Burks, KP DeLarber, Kaysen Wolfram who was first team all GMC, Keegan Miles and Tyler Wimpkin all graduated last season. Returning for the 2023 Roster is a senior class of Luke Harris, Eli Plosman, Jacob Overly, and Taryn Ward. They'll be playing their final season in a Rams uniform. Last year, the Rams bats did average 11 runs a game during their 27-game season. Their team ERA was 2.58. Ram staff had three shutouts to their credit last season. Kaysen Wolfram led the way with a 6-0 record. Cole Camaso was 5-1. Nolan Schaefer was 4-1. Unfortunately, all of those have graduated. Rams ended last season with a team average of 337. Senior Cole Camaso set a new Rams record with 50 RBI, breaking the then all-time record of Ram great Clay Pittman. Set a record of 46. That was in 2013. Thomas will also batted 505 for the season. That's fifth all-time high for a Rams batter. Schaefer, Bergman, Camaso, Bailey, and Wolfram all will be needing replaced here in the heart of the Rams batting order. Looking at the season ahead for the Rams, for the first time in nine years, minimal experience does return at several key positions. On the mound this season, as we stated above, graduations Wolfram, Camaso, Schaefer, and Burks, Rams look to establish a new identity to the rotation in 2023. Corbin Castile, Eli Plasman, Karen Ward, Alex Shoblin, and Hunter Bosselman all will look to eat some innings up for Coach Orenolette. Infield returning letter winners, third baseman Taryn Ward, slick fielding shortstop Caden Radzik, who made a great impression last season as he took over for then graduated Marcus Rube. Radzik started as a sophomore at shortstop for Coach Renolette. Rams outfield does return Luke Harris and Grady Gusweiler. Gusweiler showed lots of speed and a great glove last season, and during our scrimmage game here, he also made a fantastic catch in the seventh inning as well. Elmwood, coming off a 6-15 and 15 season, they were 4-9 and nine in the NWC, but big news, longtime coach Kyle Reiser did retire. Reiser guided the Royals to 588 overall wins, 304 losses, 17 league championships, five district titles, one Division Three runner-up. That is through 32 seasons at Elmwood. Coached 33 seasons total 
594 wins, 315 losses in those 33 season. Returning are letter winners, four of them, f- four seniors as well. Shortstop Mason Mossbarger, third baseman Alan Sterling, center fielder Lex Vasca, and pitcher Hayden Wickert. Two juniors, pitcher Andrew Holland and first baseman slash pitcher Jamie Palmer also returned. Palmer will be starting tonight. Last year, Vasca made a 377. He was second team, or yeah, second team all NBC. Mossberger batted 356, Holland 281. They were all honorable mentions. Elmwood enters tonight at 0 and 2. Losses to Macomb and Whitmer. Elmwood is coached by first year coach Derek Meyer. Derek is a 2003 graduate of. Sonora High School. He is the brother of Chad Meyer, who the field here is dedicated to. Meyer was a freshman JV coach at Toledo Whitmer for eight seasons. Superintendent at Elmwood is Tony Borton. Your principal is Ty Traxler. Athletic director is Kevin Wolf, who does a fantastic job over there. Never met a, somebody as full of energy as Kevin. Athletic trainers, Mackenzie Carpenter. Colors are royal blue and white. They are from the NBC, the Northern Buckeye Conference. They are Division Three. Rams are coached by head coach Brett Renolette. 24 seasons for BR here at Sonora. 389 and 144 for a 73 percent winning percentage. Overall, 427 and 170. Coach BR did lead the Delta program. Picked up career win number 400 on May 1st, 2021 versus Pat- Patrick Henry. Assisted by Chuck Carey, Reed Anders, and Eric Tipton. Four Final Four appearances, 2011, 12, 13, and 14. Won the state title in 2014, courtesy of Clay Pittman driving home E.J. Kissel with a winning run in that exciting game versus Newark Catholic. Rams have 10 GMC titles under BR. 2009, 10, 11, 12, 13, 17, 18, 19, 21, and 22. Coach Renolette is 119 and 40 overall in the GMC. Superintendent here at Northeastern Local Schools is Nicole Wells. Your principal is Alex Nassiger. Athletic Director Mr. Craig Rudder who says hello to everybody out there watching and listening. Trainer is Emily Volmar. Rams colors are Hunter Green and White. Rams are Division 3 wherever you are, however you may be listening or watching. Thanks to tuning in to this afternoon's game. Coming up live from Tenora High School is the Tenora Rams taking on the Elmwood Royal. Broadcast studio tonight brought to you by Cut and Polished Hair Nail Salon located at 413 Hopkins Street in Defiance. In game scoreboards brought to you by Drop Zone Pizzeria and Striker and Ayersville. Your pregame brought to you by Signs Excavating. Video sponsorship is always brought to you by Batten Stevens in downtown Jewel, Ohio. Your stats, BSN Sports and Mr. Jim Guerra is your postgame. Bidlack Insurance and Investments and your player of the game in a Rams victory is Higby Embroidery. Rams uniforms wearing the all grays tonight with the green numbers and white trim. Elmwood also in the all grays. They have the royal blue numbers and lettering with black trim. David Frank weather was sunny. It's a little bit overcast here at Sonora High School. 65 degrees, best day so far we've had. Wind blowing in about 8 to 10 miles an hour from the center field. Stay tuned. Coming up, we will have the pregame lineups, and we'll do it right after this here on Sonora Rams Live. Who couldn't use an extra 3000 or 2000 mm, Okay. How about 1000 or even 500 Those are the top four prizes of the most recent Sonora Athletic Boosters fundraiser. Tickets are $10 each or 6 for 50 Get a ticket at any Tenora home game. Just visit a booster member or go to our Facebook page at Tenora Athletic Boosters. The drawing will be held after 2,000 tickets are sold for a spring sports drawing. The Athletic Boosters is a nonprofit organization that supports the Tenora athletes, coaches, and athletic facilities. The Boosters support is shown many ways, including volunteering time, raising money, and contributing funds to better enhance the Rams team's or organization's performance. Yearly and lifetime memberships are available. That's the Tenora Rams Athletic Boosters who are a proud sponsor of Tenora Sports and Tenora Rams Live.
back at Sonora High School. Forgot to hit the mic for the national anthem. Run down our lineups really quick for the Rams. Aiden Mosier. Lee Offen playing in left field. Caden Radzik batting second at the shortstop. Batting third, Alex Shoblin. He's at second base. Batting cleanup at third base, Karen Ward. And batting fifth in right field is Luke Harris. Batting sixth behind the plate for the two Rams. And can't really miss him. It's Dalton Wolfram with the flowing blonde mullet. <laughs> Eli Plasman batting seventh. Eli is DHing for Hunter Bosselman, who will be on the mound. Batting eighth, B.J. Morlock at first. And batting ninth in center field is a Grady Gusweiler. For the 0-2 Elmwood Royals, Mason Mossbarger leading off. He will be at shortstop batting second. Luke Armbruster who will be your DH. Hitting for the pitcher, Jamie Palmer. Batting third, Colton Bradford be behind the plate. Batting fourth, Andrew Holland, he'll be at first base. Batting fifth, Alan Sterling at third base. Batting sixth, Mason Oliver. We think Mason's in right. Coach actually had two right fielders, so we're assuming Mason is in right. Batting seventh in left field is Landon Murray. Batting eighth is Cameron Kingery. He'll be at second base. And batting ninth. In center field, we think, is Lex Baska. Rams coming in at 2-0. Two, oh, two road victories last week. Plasma actually is on the mound. So we like Plasma is getting the start. I guess I read the BR's lineup wrong. <laughs> I thought he had Hunter starting. First pitch swung on. Knocked over the shortstop. Caden Radzik's head into left field for a solid base hit. Mason Mossbarger leads off with a single to start the Elmwood attack. Mossbarger headed to Heidelberg for football. Actually, quite a few of the kids here. Hayden Wickard just signed with Walsh. Alan Sterling playing baseball at Owens. And Mason Oliver is yet to determine his colleges, talking to some of the parents beforehand. Plasman fires over to first base, back safely. Set the Rams defense. Plasman on the mound. Wolfram behind the plate. Morlock at first. Shovelin at second. Radzik at short. Ward at third. Another throw to first base. Back safely as Mossbarger. Rams outfield. Left to right. Mosier, Gusweiler, and Harris. DH will be Bosselman. Pitch swung on, drilled just outside the bag at third. Foul ball. Luke Ann Brewster. Three sets of uniforms for Elmwood. Pinstripes, grays, and blue. And some of them have different numbers, so we got to make sure we get the right numbers with uniform here. Plasman's pitch, strike two. No balls, two strikes, nobody out. Runner at first, just underway here at Sonora High School. Plasman from the stretch. Pitches to the plate, swung on and miss. Down goes Ambrewster, out number one. Colton Bradford, the number three hitter behind the plate. Today will be Bradford. Runner at first, Mossbarger, who saw the first pitch that he saw tonight. Or hit the first pitch he saw into left field for a solid single. Plasman, third throw over there, back safely is Mossbarger. Pitch to Bradford, swung on and missed. Strike one. Runner at first with a decent lead over there's Mason Mossbarger. Throw over there by Plasman again. Morlock snags it. A little bit of high throw on that one. Mossbarger, 356 last year. Had 10 steals. 
Plasman from the stretch comes to the plate. Little hopper to Ward a third over to second base for the force. Back over to first for the relay is not in time. So Mossbarger is out number two at second base. Bradford is on on the fielder's Up choice. Plate, number 16, Andrew Holland. Cleanup hitter Andrew Holland wears number 16 on his road gray jersey. Hits from the left side. Holland will be at first base. Plasman from the stretch comes to the plate. First pitch. Swung on. Fouled off. First base side out of play. And talking to the Myers beforehand, they said it was almost 13 years to the day that they dedicated the field to Chad Meyer who passed away on May 7th, 2010. Played for the Rams from 2003 to 2006. Plasman's 0-1, catches the outside corner, strike two. No balls, two strikes, two outs, no score. Runner at first. Mason Mossbarger. Plasman's pitch, a little high and away. One ball, two strikes. Royals last year were six and sixteen. Actually, switching conferences starting with the 2024 school season. Ground ball, second base side. Shoblin scoops it up, fires over to first base in time to get Holland. In the inning, no runs for the Royals. They do get one hit. No Ram errors. Royals leave one. After a half inning of play here at Snort High School, no score. Rams coming to bat. BSN Sports, the recognized leader in team athletic gear. BSN forms partnerships with educators, coaches, and students to build school pride, student engagement, and community spirit. Our partnerships give you access to the most brand names in the industry with all of the hottest products at the best prices. From Nike to Wilson to Under Armour, we can customize any team needs. Since 1972, BSN Sports has brought you the brands that make you untouchable on the field, the court, or anywhere else you play your sport. Contact BSN local sports rep Jim Garris for any of your sports needs at 419 419- 576-8940. Here comes more Tenora Rams sports action. Back at Tenora High School, Mason Mossbacher led the game off with a single. That was the first pitch he saw, served in the left field, and he did not go any farther. Plasma retired the next three. Looking at the Rams. Aiden Mosier will be batting leadoff, batting second, Caden Radzik batting third, Alex Shawlin batting fourth, Taryn Ward batting fifth, Luke Harris batting sixth, Dalton Wolfram batting seventh is Hunter Bosselman batting eighth, B.J. Morlock, and batting ninth is Grady Gusmeiler. Looking at the defense for Elmwood, Jamie Palmer will be on the mound, Colton Bradford behind the plate, Andrew Holland at first, Cam Kingery at second, Mason Mossbarger at short. Alan Sterling at third outfield. Landon Murray in right. Lex Vasca will be in center. And in right field is Mason Oliver. Aiden Mosier leads off for the Rams. Now batting number six, Aiden Mosier. So many girls had a heck of a start to the season so far. Had three singles versus Lipsick in the Rams' 8-3 victory. That was game two last Thursday. First pitch from Palmer to Mosier is a strike. Mosier bats from the left side. Palmer's pitch stays a little bit high. Count evens at one ball and one strike. Arm Roosters are DH for Coach Meyer. 1-1 one, one pitch to Mosier. That one's high and away. Ball two. Derek Meyer, first-year coach for Elmwood, took over for a long-time assistant, or long-time assistant, long-time head coach, Coach Reiser. There's two. Mosier's fouled off. Two balls, two strikes. Bottom of the first inning, no score here. 32 years at Elmwood for Coach Reiser. 588 wins. 
at Elmwood. 2-2 pitch to Mosier, slaps it into center field for a base hit. Mosier leads off the Ram attack with a slap single in the center field. We'll bring up Ram shortstop, Caden Radzik. Radzik Jr., a heck of a sophomore season at the plate and in the field, batted 338 last year for Caden. First pitch to Radzik outside. It's a rather, rather dubious honor. Caden also led the Rams in hit by pitch with 12. Sometimes that's a bad category to lead a team in. Palmer from the stretch looks at the runner, comes to the plate, catches the outside corner. Count evens, one ball, one strike. Hopefully we get out of here before the rain starts. It's supposed to start a little bit after 7. Palmer's 1-1. One, one. Throws over to first base. They got Mosier picked Andrew, off. Give me Andrew. Holland runs him on, back to second. Got him. Get him. Still has him in the run down. Second Get baseman him. Oh chases him back to first. Mosier's still alive. Now they got the catcher out there in the run down. Mosier's still going back and forth. He's eventually going to run out of gas, and he just did. Putting the tag on Mosier. That's one of the longest run downs I've ever seen was Cam Kingery. The second baseman, and like I said, the catcher, Colton Bradford, was out in the middle of that run down there. So that's a perfect execution by Elmwood and Coach Meyer's squad. One of the, I'm not going to score that one. We're just going to put out number one for Mosher. <laughs> when you get nine in the rundown, you know what's or not nine. When you get two in a rundown, you know what's a long rundown in the, in the uh, base pass. One one pitch to Radzik. That one's outside. Two balls and one strike. And generally what happens in a situation like this, usually there will be a walk or a, a base hit when a runner gets picked off. 2-1 pitch to Ratchet catches the inside corner. Strike two. Two balls, two strikes, one out. Nobody on base now. But of the first inning here at Sonora High School, no score. 2-2 two, two coming from Jimmy Palmer. That's hits in front of the plate. That's ball three. Sixty-four degrees here at Sonora High School on your David Frank weather forecast. Three-two pitch, Radzik, little number off the handle. I think if he won the swung, actually would have hit him on the wrist. Scooped up by Palmer, throws over to first base for out number two to retire. Caden Radzik. One three on the putout. Alex Shawlin's going to step in. Shawlin three twenty-four last season. Shawlin playing at second base for. Coach Renolet. Palmer winds it up. First pitch is a strike to Alex Shoblin. Groove Field here at Sonora High School. First high school official game here. Oh, one stays inside count evens at one and one. Coach, er, Coach Meyer. First year coach. 2003 Tenora graduate, Derek Meyer. 1-1 one, one pitch. Served into right center field. Solid base hit for Shoblin. Makes a wide turn. He's going to hang on there. Two out single for Alex Shoblin. This is second hit in the inning. Unfortunately, the Rams had a runner picked off earlier. Now batting number four, Terran Ward. bring up Terran Ward. Ward, the Rams' third baseman, batted 333 last year. Getting cleanup for Coach Renolette. Renner at first, two outs, no score here in the bottom of the first inning. First pitch swung on, high pop into shallow right field. Second baseman out there, Cam Kingery, makes the call and puts it away for out number three. In the inning, the Rams, no runs, they get two hits, no Elmwood errors, one Ram left on base. After one here at Sonora High School, we are scoreless. We'll be back right after this. I'm out. Wooden Indian Pawn and Gun of Defiance has been serving Northwest Ohio for over 30 years. Need cash? Collateral pawn loans are available. Stop in and see Shar and the staff at 5727 State Route 66 North in Defiance, Ohio. Wooden Indian Pawn and Gun carries a full line of new and pre-owned items that include firearms, ammo, optics, game systems, knives, jewelry, and Amish Poly furniture. Wooden Indian Pawn and Gun has in-house jewelry as well as a gunsmith on site. Hours of operation are Monday 10 to 7, Tuesday through Friday 10 to 5, and Saturday 9 to 3. Got questions? Give them 
them a call, 419-784-9880, or visit them online at woodenindianpawn.com, or visit their Facebook page. Wooden Indian Pawn and Gun, your locally owned pawn specialists. Say, go Rams. Northwest Ohio Sports is the place for sports rankings, news, scores, podcasts, and more for area athletics. Check them out at Northwest Ohio Sports on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Back at Sonora High School, no score. Both teams had their leadoff hitter on base, and neither team could score. For Elmwood, going to send up 5, 6, and 7. Sterling, Oliver, and Murray to bat against Plasman. Rams have softball as well. Rams, Lady Rams hosting Defiance and Coach Dennis Parrish next door. Try to keep an eye on that score as we work our way through here. Plasman winds up. First pitch coming to Sterling. Swung on in the strike one. Dr. AJ has the Lady Rams game on Facebook live as well, so got a kind of a Facebook Live doubleheader. Rams baseball, Rams softball. Plasman winds it up his 0-1. Ground ball, shortstop side. Radzik scoops it up, throws over to first base. Morlock holds the bag. Sterling grounds out. 6-3 for the first out here in the second inning. Up to the plate, number eight, Mason Oliver. Mason Oliver steps in, and Oliver is going to bat from the left side. Had a heck of a senior season as a running back. I think he's either top 2,000 yards or came close. If that name sounds familiar, it does. The Rams scrimmaged Elmwood in the preseason for football, then met them in round two in the playoffs. As Rams dominated the first three quarters over at Elmwood. One. Oh, pitch from Plasman stays outside. Two balls and no strike to Mason Oliver. So several names will be familiar throughout the lineup that actually played football for Elmwood. Plasman's 2-0 breaking ball stays high. Three balls and no strike to Mason Oliver. Mason Oliver definitely had his hand in that comeback in that fourth quarter. Just 21 points and it seemed like about three minutes for Elmwood. 3-0 pitch to Mason Oliver. Catches the outside corner. Three balls and one strike. Plasman winds it up his 3-1 to Oliver. Lined just outside of third base coach Derek Meyer. Talked briefly with Coach Meyer last night. He's looking forward to making the visit back over here at Tenora. Like we said, Coach Meyer is a 2003 Tenora graduate. Payoff pitch. Swung on and missed. Down goes Oliver for out number two. That's the second strikeout for Plasman. Going to bring up Landon Landon Murray. Murray batting seventh, playing in... Left field for Coach Meyer. We said Coach Meyer took over for longtime coach and 32 years at one school. I mean, that's a long time for Coach Reiser. Catches the outside corner. Murray's down. No balls and one strike. Coach Reiser is still a teacher at L1. Oh, one pitch. That one's almost the same spot. Didn't get the call on that one. One ball, one strike, two out. Nobody on, no score. Top of inning number two here at Tenora High School. Plasman winds it up his 1-1 pitch. Hitting the gap in right center field. Harris cuts it off before it gets through. Nice job over there by Luke holding Murray to a single. Congratulations to Luke as well. Luke participated in the Saturday night Northwest Ohio All-Star Game. He won the three-point contest. He also won the slam dunk contest. And if you haven't seen that, I highly suggest you do. I think his sister Sarah has that posted on her social media accounts. Throw back over to first base. Back safely as Murray with a head first dive. Luke bounced the ball off of the wall. Came back towards the basket, picked it up in midair, and dunked it. <laughs> this is a nice, nice uh, work there by Luke. Pitches fouled back. Strike one. Runner at first, two outs, no score. Here is Elmwood bats in the top of inning number two. Rams in action, I believe, Thursday back here versus Paulding. 
heck of a game last year over at Paulding. Plasman's 0-1. That one stays high and away. One ball, one strike. To number eight hitter, Cam Kingery. Kingery playing at second base for Coach Meyer. Plasman pitch stays inside. Two balls and one strike. On deck is Alex Vasca for Elmwood. Plasman from the stretch, from the set, his 2-1 pitch, ground ball deep in the hole. Radzik, long throw over in time. Nice play by Caden Radzik again for out number three. Elmwood, no runs. Another hit. No Ram errors. They leave another after an inning and a half here at Sonora High School. We are still scoreless. The Law Office of Wiener Hill, Weber, and Stanley is a full-service law firm dedicated to providing quality legal services in defiance in all of Northwest Ohio. Since 1965, their attorneys have had a well-deserved reputation of excellence in serving clients with a focus on integrity, advocacy, and understanding. At Wiener Hill, Weber, and Stanley, we are a general practice law firm that can handle all of your legal needs. We offer high-quality legal work and personal client service, and each of our attorneys is committed to providing you with top-notch legal support. Attorneys Jim Wiener, Danny Hill, Cam Stanley, and Ian Weber are here to assist you. Give them a call at 419-782-3010 or visit them online at wienerlawoffice.com. The law office of Wiener, Hill, Weber, and Stanley is a proud supporter of the Tenora Rams. Here comes more Tenora Rams sports action. Back at Tenora High School, no score as we head to the bottom part of inning number two. Rams will send up Dalton Wolfram, Hunter Bosselman, and B.J. Morlock against Jimmy Palmer. Rams had two hits in the first inning. Unfortunately, had a runner picked off first. So two hits and no runs for the Rams. Now batting number one, Luke Harris. Harris. This is Harris, Wolfram, Plasman. So I miss Luke. First pitch to Harris. Strike one called. One pitch coming to Harris. Fouled way back out of play. No balls and two strikes. Luke's coming off a first team GMC basketball season. Average 18.6 points a contest. Played in two All Star games the last two weekends. Won the three point contest Saturday night. And as we said, also won the slam dunk contest Saturday night. <laughs> Had a breakaway dunk during the game, actually. I think that was in the third quarter. Stole the pass at midcourt and took off and put a one-hand slam down. 0-2 pitch coming to Harris. That one stays high. Coach Tipton coaching at first and BR is always coaching at third. 1-2 pitch coming from Palmer to Harris. That one's low and away. Count even two balls and two strikes. No score here in the bottom of inning number two. Lady Rams down one nothing in the bottom part of inning number two. Next door to Defiance. Harris lines it over the shortstop's head into a left field. Left fielder overruns the ball. Harris thought about it. He got it halfway down there, then turns around wisely because it looks like he would have been a dead duck. So Harris picks up the Rams' third hit. It's going to bring up Dalton Wolfram. So Wolfram steps in, bats from the right side of the plate. Harris on it first. Palmer from the stretch. Lines it past the third baseman into left field. Left fielder bobbles it. Harris stops at second. Wolfram with a smash past Sterling at third base. So Wolfram... On at first, Harris on at second. Hunter Bosselman gets some instructions from head coach Brett Merlin at third. No score. Rams threatening here with two on and nobody out in the bottom part of inning number two here at Sonora High School at Grube Field. Palmer from the stretch. Looks like scores are on the bunt. Pitch over the top of his helmet. The breaking ball. Uh, 
Also, one digs back in. The 1-0 pitch coming. Squares around the bun again. That one's, I was going to say low, but it cut the outside corner. Count evens at one ball and one strike. Third baseman playing back at third. First baseman even with the bag. Palmer looks back at the runner at second. Pitch inside to Hunter Bossel and two balls and one strike. If there's no flies flying around in Northwest Ohio, I assure you they're all here at the Snora press box. <laughs> As me and John have found out the last two weeks. Oh, Tapper, third base side, past the third baseman, and shortstop scoops it up. Mason Mossbogger, but he does not have a play. That's an infield single for Hunnel Bosselman to load the bases. Harris on at third. Wolfram at second, and Bosselman is on at first. Bases are loaded for B.J. Morlock. Morlock, the Rams' first baseman, digs in from the right side of the plate. No score. Rams are threatening here on the bottom of the second. Pitch to Morlock. Ground ball, second base side. Only plays over to first base. Scoring is Harris. Up to bat, number 25, Brady Gusweiler. So Morlock with the RBI on the sacker, or the fielder's choice. 4-3 on the putout for out number one. Wolfram goes to third. Bosselman's at second. Pitch coming to Grady Gusweiler. Strike one called. If there's anybody that's made two better plays in center fielder <laughs> than Grady has the last couple games, I don't know who it is. Pitch to Grady is outside. Count evens at one ball and one strike. Last year at Defiance, in the district finals play against Ottawa Hills was one for the books and they had that scrimmage game here. Grady had another 1-1 one, one pitch to Grady is in the side. Two balls and one strike. Rams lead 1-0 here in the bottom of the second inning. Threatening to add more. Wolfram's on at third and Bosselman on at second. 2-1 to Grady. Swung on. Fouled it off. First base side. Count goes to two balls and two strikes. <laughs> Top of the lineup. Aiden Moser on deck for the Rams. Palmer's pitch. Swung on. Hit right back through the box. Shortstop Mossbarger up. And only play over to first base just in time to get the speedy Gus Weiler for out number two. Now, Scoring is Dalton Wolfram with run number two. Bosselman goes over to third. RBI for Grady on the play. Out number two. That's 6-4 on the putout. Top of the lineup, Aiden Mosier steps in. Mosier, runner at third. Two outs now. First pitch. High and away. Ball one. Aiden singled. This first plate appearance in the first inning. Two nothing Rams here on your drop zone pizzeria scoreboard. Bottom of the second inning. Jimmy Palmer from the stretch with the runner at third. 1 0 pitch to Mosier. Strike called. Count evens at one ball and one strike. Wind blowing in slightly from center field. It was 64 degrees at the first pitch. 1-1 one, one pitch coming to Mosier. Ground ball, second base side. Gary scoops it up, fires over to first base, and time to get Mosier for out number three. Rams do a little bit of damage. They get two runs. They do so on three hits. No errors. Rams leave one after two innings of play here at Groove Field at Sonora High School on your drop zone pizzeria scoreboard. It is Tenora. Two and the Elmwood Royals, nothing. We'll be back right after this time out. Drop Zone Pizzeria in Ayersville and Stryker offers the area's best pizza, wings, subs, and calzones. In fact, Drop Zone Pizzeria was voted the area's best pizza in 2020 and again for 2022. From pickle pizza to pilot bread to grandma pizza, Drop Zone Pizzeria is always looking outside the pizza box for something special for their fantastic customers. Order by calling in Ayersville at 419-395-2525 or in Stryker at 419 990 
210-490-2525. Hours of operation close Monday, Tuesday through Thursday, and Sunday, 4 to 8 p.m., Friday and Saturday till 9. Drive Zone Pizzeria now with two locations, downtown Ayersville at 13995 Fruit Ridge Road, and also at 301 South Defiance Street in downtown Stryker. Stop in at the Stryker location for a bite of ice cream. Visit them on Facebook at the Drop Zone Pizzeria where online ordering is available. And remember, the Drop Zone Pizzeria says go Rams. Top of the third inning, 2 nothing Rams. Bottom part of the order, 9 then the top, 1 and 2. Vasca, Mossbarger, and Ambrooster, too bad against Plasma. Don't forget, April 15th, the Tenor Ram Athletic Boosters have their yearly dinner. That's at the Ridgeville Legion. Tickets are $50 each. Also, during that, the raffle for the spring fundraiser. You can still get tickets for that. Tickets are 6 for 50 or $10 each. You can see any booster member to get a ticket for the raffle or for the actual event on April 15th. First pitch is tapped foul. Third base side. Wolfram scoops it up. Has the ball back to Plasman. I think Eli's had that cap since he was in as a freshman. <laughs> Eli's just, uh, I don't want a new cap. I'll just wear the same one. A little bit of superstition there for Eli. Some like a new hat every season. Eli's sticking with the one he wears year-round during Acme and during the high school season. Lex Vasca. No balls, one strike. Plasman winds it up. Ground ball, third base side. Ward scoops it up. Throw over in time to get the speedy Vasca for out. Number one. Now batting number 20. 5-3 on the put out top of the lineup. Mason Mossbarger saw the first pitch he saw tonight. Served that into left field for a base hit. He was left stranded there at first base. Did not move. As Plasman retired the next three in order. And Brewster on deck. Plasman winds it up. First pitch to Mossbarger. Slung on and missed. Strike one. Mossbarger, we said, going to Heidelberg for football. 0-1 pitch, a little bit in front of the plate. Count evens at one ball and one strike. We said Hayden Wickard, who's not playing here tonight, headed to Walsh. He was, he's probably the best pocket passer that I've seen at the high school level in, well, quite some time. Curtin Olsen was pitched to Mossbarger is low. Two balls and one strike. Ultimus is good, but Mossbarger just has the size, the arm, the strength. He was, he's just deadly. 2-1 pitch from Plasman. Swung on and miss. Two balls and two strikes. So That's Hayden Wickard I'm speaking of, but, but Mossbarger is a heck of a receiver. He's headed to Heidelberg on that Elmwood team that had a heck of a run this last year. Swung on and missed. Plasman changed it up. Moss Barger goes down on strikes. Third strikeout for Eli. Out number two. The DH, Luke Ambrewster, steps in. Ambrewster struck out in the first inning. Pitch is fouled off first base side into the fence. No balls, one strike, two out. Nobody on. 2 nothing Rams as Elmwood bats here in the top of the third inning. Rams with two in the bottom of the second inning. Plasman long look in, gets the sign from Ruffin, winds it up, comes to the plate. Hit third base side, foul, Ward giving chase. It's out of play. No balls and two strikes. The count to Ambrewster. <laughs> Thanks for joining us here on Tenor Rams Live on this Monday, early evening. Plasman gets to sign his 0-2 pitch. Old dribbler, first base side. Morlock fires over to Plasman. Nice play there by the Rams to retire and Brewster. Out number three in the inning for the Royals. No runs, no hits, no ram errors. 
for the first time. The Royals do not leave anybody after two and a half innings here at Groove Field at Sonora High School. On your drop zone pizzeria scoreboard is the Sonora Rams 2 and the Elmwood Royals nothing. Higby Embroidery of Defiance offers custom screen printing and custom embroidery to local high schools and individuals from all areas. Connie Higby and her staff have been serving and supporting Tenora High School as well as the Tri-County area since 1999. From throws to t-shirts to school jackets and much more, Higby Embroidery is here to serve your custom needs. Higby Embroidery is located at 1940 East 2nd Street in Defiance. Contact them at 419-428-3000 or visit them online at Higby.com or Higby Embroidery on Facebook. Higby Embroider is a proud sponsor of the Tenora Rams Live Player of the Game Award. Check out Tenora Rams Live. Live events broadcast on YouTube and post-game results, articles, schedules, and more can all be found on TenoraRams.com. Back to the action on Tenora Rams Sports Live. Heading to the bottom part of inning number three, Rams with a 2-0 lead. Rams will send 2-3-4, and four. Razzik, Shoblin, and Ward against Jamie Palmer. We'll say that John's killed half the flies up here in the press box so far, so he still still has about 20 more to go. <laughs> it's not quite as bad as it was last week up here. Scrimmage that we had versus Lincoln View, I think every fly that was alive in Ohio was up here in the press box. Now batting number 11, Keaton Radzik. Radzik steps in. Ground ball back to the pitcher his first time up. Radzik, 338 in 2022. Last season, he had a double versus McComb and two singles versus Lipsick. Rams first two games. Rams 2-0. First pitch to Caden is called a strike. Rams back here Thursday. Start the GMC play versus Paulding. 0-1 pitch to Caden. Lace third base side off the third baseman's glove. Sterling down the left field line. Radzik holds on to first base with a single. That was a rocket off the third baseman's glove. And honestly, it looked like the pitch was up and in. It was more of a self-defense swing than anything. Back uh, back into the box is Alex Shoblin. Singled in the first inning. Shoblin did. Throw order first, or fake throw order first base. Radzik back safely. Caden had five steals last season. Palmer from the stretch. Pitch swung on and missed. Shoblin down no balls and one strike. Two nothing Rams as they bat here in the bottom of the third inning. Set the Elmwood defense again when we get a chance. Palmer on the mound. Bradford behind the plate. And Brewster's your DH. Holland at first. Kingery at second. Mossbarger at short. Sterling at third. Murray, Vasca, and Oliver, your outfield left to right. From the stretch, Palmer comes to the plate. 0-1 to Shoblin and swung on and missed. Strike two. No balls and two strikes. To Alex Shoblin. So Alex digs back in. Throw back over to first base. Radzik's back safely. Palmer with a sign. 0-2 pitch to shot. There goes Radzik. Swung on, driven deep center field. Back goes the center fielder. Vaska puts it away to retire Shoblin. Now batting number four. Out number one. Yeah. Going to bring up Taron Ward. Ward flew out to shallow right field, was caught by the second baseman Cameron Kingery, his first plate appearance. One out, runner at first, Shoblin. Rams up 2 0 here in the bottom part of inning number three. Pitch to Ward is up and in. One ball, no strikes to Taron. Radzik leads from first. Palmer looks over from the stretch. 1-0 pitch to Ward. Stays inside. Two balls and no strikes to Taron. Taron, one of the Rams' more consistent hitters the last month of the season last year. More and more playing time as the season went on. 2-0 pitch to Ward. That's a little bit up and away. Ball three to Taron. Luke Harris on deck for the Rams. 
Palmer 3-0 coming to Taryn Ward. That's low, ball four. Now batting number one, Luke Harris. Harris is going to step in with runners at first and second. Radzik goes down to second. Ward trots down the first on the base on balls. Harris singled and scored the Rams' first run in inning number two. Runners lead away from first and second. Palmer from the stretch comes to the plate. Breaking ball, strike. One call to Luke Harris. Harris. Last season hit right at 200. Limited playing time last year for Luke. Pitch to Harris, swung on, fouled off first base side out of play. No balls and two strikes to Luke. Luke rams up 2 nothing here in the bottom of the third. Have runners at first and second with one out. Dalton Wolfram on deck for the Rams. Reed Anders coaching at first this inning. Him and Coach Tipton alternate. Pitch to Harris, lined into left field for a solid base hit. Runners are going to hold. Razik puts on the brakes at third. Harris is two for two. So Razik's at third. Ward is at second. Harris is on at first for head coach Renolette. It's going to bring up Dalton Wolfram. Rams up two nothing with one out here. Not sure BR is going to do a suicide squeeze here in inning number. <laughs> Anything is on the table when BR is coaching. Wolfram at the plate, singled and scored in the second as well. Rams lead 2 0. As the base is loaded with one out. Pitch to Wolfram, little tapper. Back behind the plate. It was almost an unintentional, un unintentional suicide squeeze there. Rams coming in at 2-0, Elmwood 0-2. Rams with victories at Macomb and at Lipsick last week. Had their Saturday game rained out. No balls and one strike. Palmer winds it up. Or from the stretch, Palmer throws it to Wolfram. Swung on and missed. Strike two. Sometimes with the bases loaded, pitchers do use the windup. Palmer sticking with the stretch. No ball, two strikes coming to Dalton Wolfram. Fouled off. But actually, no, it's going to stay. Yes, yeah, stay drops him side the line at right field. That's going to score Caden Radzik. I thought it was going to hit in the foul territory, but it hugged the line to Wolfram with a RBI bloop single down the right field line. He's on a first base. Razik does score. Run number three for the Rams. Ward is down at third. Harris is at second, and Wolfram is on at first with that RBI single. Base is still full of Rams. Hunter Bosselman to the plate. First pitch to him is called a strike on the outside corner. Bosselman singled and got as far as third in inning number two. Three nothing to Nora here in the bottom of the third inning. Rams batting with the bases loaded and one out. Jamie Palmer's pitch. He's a little bit low. Count evens at one ball and one strike. I usually have whiteout handy, but I think I left my whiteout over there with AJ at the softball diving. 1-1 one, one pitch, shot in the center field. Vasca comes in, Cat makes the play. It gets by Vasca, that could clear the bases. Ward scores, here comes Harris. Wolfram is stopped at third. Rams with a 5-0 lead. Now at the plate, number five, B.J. Morlock. Miss RBI single for Bosselman. Goes a second on the... Ball got by the center fielder, but he's on at second. Heck of a play out there by Vasca. Or attempt, I should say. A meeting on the mound. Coach Derek Meyer out there to talk with his pitcher, Jamie Palmer. It's 5 nothing to Nora here. Rams with runners at second and third. Wolfram on at third. Bosselman on at second. 
I'm going to bring up B.J. Morlock. And anytime you see number five on a Rams uniform, you automatically think of who? Nolan Schaefer, yes. That's who you think of. Nolan down at Ohio State for his freshman year. Hopefully Nolan's doing well down there. Saw Nolan quite a bit during the winter sports season. He's going to do quite a few of the Rams basketball games. Price's pitch to Morlock. Strike one. Still only one out here in the bottom part of inning number three. Thought he has another white out in here, but apparently I do not. Swung on and missed. Morlock now no balls and two strikes to Jamie Price. Rams with two in the second and three here in the third to grab a 5 nothing lead over the Elmwood Royals. 0-2 pitch inside. Almost hit Morlock. I'm not sure how it didn't. Almost went right through him. <laughs> Rams at second and third. One out. Morlock at the plate. One ball, two strike pitch. That one's low. Nice stop by Colton Bradford. Two balls, two strikes. The count to BJ Morlock. That's low and away. Ball three. Count goes full to Morlock. First base is open. <laughs> Not that they're pitching around, BJ. I'm just saying the first piece is open. Grady Gusweiler on deck for the Rams. Pitch hit deep center field. That's enough to get the runner home from third. Wolfram tags up. He's going to score on the sacrifice fly for run number six. That's an RBI for Morlock. That's out number two. Rams up 6 nothing here. After, well, still in the bottom part of inning number three. That's going to bring up Rams center fielder number nine hitter Grady Gusweiler. Grady, 290 last year. Runner at second. Two outs now. Palmer's pitch stays high. I talked to Coach Meyer for a little bit last night, and he remembers playing on the original Sonora High School baseball field, which is now where the Sonora Elementary parking lot sets. Check swing. That's called a strike. One ball, one strike, two outs to Grady Gusweiler, runner at second, Hunter Bosselman. Rams with four here in the third to grab a 6 nothing lead over Elmwood. Breaking ball stays a bit high. Two balls and one strike. Palmer thought he got the corner. He did not. Palmer's 2-1 to Grady. Fouled straight back. Two balls and two strikes. Two outs. Bottom of inning number three. Six nothing. Tenor on your drop zone pizzeria scoreboard. Runner at second. Hunter Bosselman. Blankets are starting to make an appearance over here at Elmwood side. Like I said, it was 64 at first pitch. Ground ball right back through the box. Nice play by second to the shortstop. Whoa! Mason Mossbarger with a heck of a play. Gus Weiler with a smash. Hit the mound. Mossbarger behind second base. Fired and scooped it up. Or scooped it up and fired over to first base just in time to get the speedy Brady Gus Weiler. For the Rams, they get four runs in the third inning. They do so on four hits, no errors. Rams leave a runner on after three innings of play here at Groove Field at Sonora High School. Drop zone pizzeria scoreboard shows the Sonora Rams six, the Elmwood Royals nothing. We'll be back right after this time out. Have your hair and nails gotten out of control over the past few months? Cut and Polish Salon of Defiance is your local salon to get all pampered up. Cut and Polish Salon offers a vast range of quality services, including haircuts, highlights, specialty coloring, waxing, manicures, and pedicures. Please schedule a visit at their fun, relaxing salon where you can be sure that all of your hair and nail needs are a top priority. Cut and Polish Hair and Nail Salon is located at 413 Hopkins Street in Defiance. Be sure to book your appointment today by calling 419-576-5087 or do your booking online by visiting their Facebook page. Cut and Polish Salon says, remember, it's all fun and games until someone breaks a nail. Cut and Polish Salon is a proud supporter of Tadora Rams Live. 
top of inning number four, six nothing Rams. Coach Meyer coaching a third and talked to BR when he came up to give me the lineup. And he goes, I remember when I started Derek in right field as a freshman, he made a diving catch to save whatever game it was. Like, BR doesn't really forget too much. He goes, over there at the old field that's now the parking lot. <laughs> now batting, number 17. Coach Meyer, a 2003 graduate of Tenora High School, is a brother of Chad Meyer, who the Tenora baseball field is in honor of Chad Meyer, who passed away. May 7th, 2010. First pitch to Bradford to strike three, four, and five for Elmwood to face Plasman, Bradford, Holland, and Sterling. Plasman winds up. Pitch lined into right field. Harris comes on, makes a nice running catch. Luke Harris retires Bradford for out number one. Up to the plate, number 16, Andrew Holland. I'll bring up Andrew Holland. Holland 0 for 1. Grounded to Shoblin, his first plate appearance. Bats from the left side. Plasman's first pitch to Holland. Swung on and missed. Strike 1. Holland, a two-year letter winner. Batted 281 last year. Had 7 RBI. Plasman winds it up his 0-1 Bounces in front of the plate. Count evens. One ball, one strike, one out. Top of the fourth inning. Six nothing Rams. Here at Rube Field. Plasma's 1 1. Rope. Into right field by Holland for a solid base hit. There's a tall grass here at Tenora High School. It's not going to knock those down anymore. For the Royals, number 15, Alan Sterling. Alan Sterling, the number five hitter, playing at third base steps. And he's 0 for 1, grounded to shortstop Bradzik, his first plate appearance. Runner at first for Elmwood, one out. They trail 6-0, Plasman from the stretch. First pitch. Off-speed pitch, strike called. Mason Oliver on deck. Runner at first, Holland, the short lead over there. Plasman from the stretch comes to the plate. That stays high. Pitch to Sterling. <laughs> Sterling headed to Owens Community College for baseball next year. Plasman's 1 1, stays high. Two balls and one strike to Sterling. Pitches hammered, foul down the left side. Two balls, two strikes, one out, runner at first. Ellen Sterling at the plate, Mason Oliver on deck six. Nothing Rams here in the top of inning number four. Plasman from the set, 2-2 two -two pitch to the plate, strike. Three is not called, it's ball three. It's been just a little high. Sterling leads from first. Or Holland leads from first. Sterling digs in three, two pitches, fouled off first base side. Count stays full at three and two. Wolf from behind the plate. Morlock at first, Shoblin at second. Bradzik at short, board at third for the Rams defense. That outside corner, strike three call. The pitch, well, two pitches ago was actually a better pitch than that, I think. Now batting Sterling, Mason Oliver. Caught looking for out number two for Plasman. That's strikeout number four. Mason Oliver digs in from the left side, struck out his first plate appearance. This one taps third base side. Ward scoops it up, throw over in time to get to Speedy Oliver. Nice play by Karen Ward. Long throw over there. 5 3 on the put out in the inning. Elmwood does not score. No runs for the Royals. They do so with one hit. No ram errors. And the Royals leave their third runner on base after three and a half innings here at Groove Field at Tenora High School. On the drop zone pizzeria scoreboard to see Tenora M6 and the Elmwood Royals nothing. We'll be back right after this time out. 
Is your business looking for someone to take the day-to-day worries of your bookkeeping off your mind? Weber Bookkeeping Solutions of Defiance is here to help. With over five years of small business bookkeeping experience and seven years in banking, you can be confident that your books are in the right hands with Jenny Weber. Let Weber Bookkeeping Solutions handle the monthly tracking and reports so that you can focus on your business goals. Contact Jenny at 419-956-1273 and you can also visit her on Facebook or at WeberBookkeeping.com. Back here at Groove Field at 6 nothing Tenora. The father of Derek Meyer and, and Chad's dad as well stopped up before the game and introduced himself and appreciated. Hey, just want to thank you guys for everything you do. Talking about myself and AJ, Tony, and Logan. He says, we watch, believe it or not, even though we're from Elwood, you know, the kids are from Sonora, we watch a lot of stuff that you guys do on the podcast and on Sonora Rams Live. So he stopped up, and that's that's one thing that you, you run into people all the time that, you know, thank you for everything you do here, which makes, I mean, it's a, it's a great job. And it just makes it that much more, you know, enjoyable when people now, that you don't even know six, just ran, randomly stop and talk to you and thank you for everything you do. We went over to the playoff game last year at Lima. The Liberty Center was playing. And there's like five or six people that stopped us before we even got to our seats and said, hey, just want to thank you guys for everything you do. So stuff like that's awesome. <laughs> Mosier steps in for the Rams. Breaking ball by Palmer. Strike one called. Rams with two in the second and four in the third to lead 6 nothing here in the bottom of the fourth inning from Tenora High School. First official high school game here at Groove Field. Pitch stayed outside. Count evens at one ball and one strike. One strike. One slightly pulling in from center field. Palmer's 1-1. One, one. Stays a little up and inside. Two balls and one strike to Aiden Mosier. Aiden had a heck of a start through three games for the Rams. 2-1 pitch, swung on, foul tipped into the glove. Two balls and two strikes. Mosier with three singles in game two. 2-2 two, two pitch, stays high, ball three. Jimmy Palmer winds it up, his 3-2 to Mosier. Ground ball, shortstop side. Moss Barger scoops it up, fires over to first base in time. Nice play out there no, by Mason Moss Barger. Gonna bring up Caden Radzik. As we said, Moss Barger is headed to Heidelberg. I think he's headed there for football, similar to Cole Comiso. Cole committed to Finley for football, then <laughs> changed to baseball, which I don't know that Cole's playing baseball this year, but Cole had a season of all seasons last year here for Tenora High School. First pitch to Caden Radzik's ball, ball one. Price winds it up. Pitch to Radzik is low, ball two. But if you hit the ball anywhere close to Mason Mossbarger out there, he's going to scoop it up and throw you out. 2-0 pitch to Radzik. Fouled third base side. Two balls and one strike. Jimmy Price, long look in. Gets a sign from his battery mate, Bradford. 2-1 pitch. Off-speed pitch to Radzik. Stays a bit high. Three balls and one strike to Caden. Three-one pitch inside corner strike two called. Count goes full to Radzik. Nobody on one out. Six nothing Rams as they bat here in the bottom part of inning number four. Payoff pitch inside. <laughs> that one hit him right square in the back. Now batting number twenty-one, Alex Shoblin. So Radzik heads down to first base and he's going to have a wealth there tonight or in the morning for sure. As we said, Caden. Let the Rams in the, the dubious category of hit by pitch last season with 12. So that's one of those categories I don't know that you want to lead the team in, but Caden's a trooper. He's over there at first base. 
Joblin's going to dig in for the Rams. One for two, singled in the first and flew out to center field in the third. Razik leads from first. Pitch is a foul back. Strike one. We'll be back here Thursday, weather permitting. Where the GMC season starts, Paulding Panthers and head coach Ben Borton will be over here. I see they're selling on food. Palmer steps off, fakes it through the first. Now comes to the plate. Razik goes. Pitch to Shoblin's driven deep center field over there to make a nice running catch as Les Vasca for out number two. Razik got to circle back to first base. Joblin gave it a ride. Unfortunately, Vasca out there tracked it down for out number two. Coach Myers got a nice center part of his uh, field out there. He got shortstop Mossbarger and Lex Vasca out there in center and uh, tracked down anything and everything. Two outs now sends Taron Ward to the plate. Ward walked and scored a run in the third, flew out, flew out in the first. Pitch to Taron, stays inside, ball one. And Ned, which I know you're out there watching or listening, we miss your voice down here beneath us that we heard scream and holler at almost for the last two or three years. <laughs> pitch, strike called, one ball, one strike, two outs. The crowd mic can pick up a lot of stuff and usually picked up Ned hollering at the umpire. In a good in a good fashion, of course. <laughs> one, one pitch, tap, third base side, head coach Brent Renolet scoops up the one hopper. Count goes one and two to Terran. Two outs, runner at first. Radzik Rams with a 6 nothing lead as they bat here in the bottom part of inning number four. Jimmy Palmer is going the distance for the Royals. One, two pitch from Palmer to Ward. They get somebody new. Swan on. How we did something to open. High pop to shortstop. And that man, Mason Mossbarger, puts it away for out number three to retire Terran Ward for the Rams. They do not score. No runs. No hits, unless you consider Caden Razzie getting hit in the back, which I don't, but he does. <laughs> no errors. The Rams leave another on base. Well, four on base through four. Through four innings of play here at Group Field. Drop zone pizzeria. Scoreboard shows Tenora six and Elmwood nothing. We'll be back right after this time out. Okalona Tavern, located in downtown Okalona, is the home of the famous Oki Tavern Wings. Stop in after the game and get some delicious wings, burgers, fries, onion rings, and enjoy a nice cold beverage while talking about the game. Hours of operation are Tuesday to Sunday, opening at 4 p.m. Check out the Okalona Tavern on Facebook for a menu before you head out. Mexican food specials every Thursday and Sunday. The Okalona Tavern, a proud supporter of the Tenora Rams. Maumee Valley Title Agency of Defiance has been providing seamless and transparent real estate closings in Northwest Ohio for 27 years. From contract to closing, their experienced team of attorneys and title agents work with lenders, businesses, and individuals to meet their real estate needs. Call the office at 419-782-3334 Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. or visit them online at maumeetitle.com. Maumee Valley Title Agency of Defiance wishes all the Tenora Rams athletes the best this season. Back here at Groove Field at Sonora High School. It's 6 nothing to Nora. Rams with two in the second and four in the third. Plasman has gone the distance for the Rams. Bottom part of the order, 7-8-9 for Elmwood. Murray, Kingery, and Vasca, your scheduled hitters to face Eli Plasman. Coach Myers out there talking to the ump who walked over to the first base dugout. So I assume something's going to change for the Royals. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you can do that or never sing, do it. You know what I mean? Plasma's first pitch is fouled right back into your living room for strike one. Yeah. Eli winds up. His 0-1 pitch coming. 
outside. Count evens at one ball and one strike. Murray, Kingery, and Vasca. I hope not. I hope they throw benches and just and throw down right in the middle of that baseball field. It'd be awesome. <laughs> outside corner <laughs> called strike not, two. I don't care. That'd be great. <laughs> I still, uh, what the hell year was that? Mason's sophomore year when he played and when they were doing that shit. I said, guys, One, two, pitch. Ground ball, second base side. Luke Harris over there. Scoops it up, fires over in time to retire Murray for out number one. So Harris is on at second. Yeah. Yeah. Not going where we're going. No. <laughs> Cameron Kingery steps in for Elmwood. Kingery is 0 for 1. First pitch is fouled back. Strike one. Yeah. Plasman winds it up his 0 1 pitch outside. Ball one. 6 nothing Rams, top of inning number 5 here. We had nice sunny skies up until about 1 o'clock, and then the sun went away and clouds came in. 1-1 one, one pitch inside, ball 2. Two balls, one strike, nobody on here in the top of inning number 5. Trent Wimpkins on at first. Harris is at second. That one's fouled first base side. Oh my god, Radzik still is short, and Ward is at third. Grady in center, Mosier in left. Let it go. He just looked over and flipped the bat at him and walked off. I was like, damn. <laughs> Plasman wants a new baseball. Counts two balls and two strikes to the number eight hitter, Cameron Kingery. That kid's always been a stud. He's a stud midget uh -huh. Big to move. Plasman winds up his 2-2 pitch. Breaking ball just misses. Count goes full at 3-2. and two. Yeah. Full count pitch from Plasman. Stays high. Ball four. Kingery trots down to first base with a one-out walk. Number seven, Lex Vasca. Lex Vasca steps in. He is 0-for-1, grounded to third in the third inning. <laughs> Runner leads away at first, one out. Pitch to Vasca, stays high, balling. Six nothing, Tenora here in the top of inning number five. Elmwood 0 and 2, Tenora 2 and 0 in this young season. Plasman throws over, just back in time. His Kingery, a good throw. I think they would have had him. Mike's over in Delta. Track. Oh, is it? Yeah. 1 0 pitch to Vasca stays yeah. outside. Two balls and one strike. No activity in the bullpen. Timeout on the field. They made that poor bastard. Going to have a meeting <laughs> with the mound. Coach Tipton steps out. Yo, shut up and run it. You're probably pretty good at it. How many times around is it? Just once. Oh, just once. Just going to have a talk with Eli. Yeah, no. Coach Meyer going to have a talk with. <laughs> yes. That's the mile. Yes. What's Vasca? I don't do with. I don't want nothing to do. Connor Wolfram in right field. That's why I told him. Thank you, Bridget. I, quit. I would. I just went and played baseball. For my I can't see that far anymore. 400. <laughs> I, came here. I have a set of binoculars I'm always going to bring, but I always forget them. So Connor Wolfram is in the contest <laughs> in right field. Harris comes in. I mean, Plays second base. Hunter Bosselman heads down to the bullpen for the Rams. Voice track pitcher. 2 0 pitch, foul ball, giving chases. Wolfram in right just comes up a little bit short. Foul ball, two balls and one strike. He doesn't want to do like shot putter distance. So Mosier, Gusweiler, and Wolfram here, Rams outfield, infield. Plasman on the mound. Wolfram behind the plate. Wimpkin at first, Harris at second, Radzik at short, and Ward at third. Two balls, one strike, one out. Runner at first for Elmwood. Six nothing Rams here in the top of inning number five. Plasman from the stretch comes to the plate. Vasca, little blooper in the center field. Gusweiler out there puts it away in right center for out number two. I mean, you get the barber girl and children. 
They're good. Top of the lineup, Mason Mossbarger. He's one for two, singled in the first, struck out in the third, and in the field, it's like a vacuum cleaner. He's pretty much sucked everything up that's come his way out there. He's starting to run and he's starting to like it. Kingery leads from first. Pitch hit right back through the box. Radzik steps on the bag just in time. Head first dive by Kingery. So Mossbarger's retired for out number three. Ground ball to Radzik unassisted. In the inning for the Royals. No runs for Elmwood. No hits, no ram errors, and Elmwood leaves a runner on. They left four on base through five. After four and a half here at Groove Field at Tenora High School, it is the Tenora Rams six and the Elmwood Royals nothing on your drop zone pizzeria score. We'll have a pitching change to start the next inning. We'll have all that for you right after this time out. Looking for an opportunity where you can grow your career, be appreciated, and be an owner where you work? Did we say owner? Yes! Mech is an employee-owned company that is highly motivated and actively supports the communities in which our facilities are located. Mayville Engineering needs you. Mech is an employee-owned business where our focus is on our customers' success. Mech has been named the nation's number one fabricator for 12 consecutive years in a survey published by the Fabricator magazine. Join the Mech family today. Full and part-time positions are available. $1,000 sign-on bonus, 401k, vacation and holiday pay, gain sharing program, employee stock ownership, medical, dental, and vision insurance, short-term and long-term disability, and shift premiums for second and third shift. Visit our website, mechinc.com. Click on careers or visit the 21 Seneca Street lobby at the Defiance location. Back here at Groove Field here at Tenora High School. Drop zone pizzeria scoreboard shows the Rams up 6-0. Pitching change on for Coach Derek Ward and the Elmwood Royals is Owen Simmons. Simmons comes on in place of Jamie Palmer. Palmer went the first four innings, gave up six runs, allowed nine hits, four left on base. No errors were committed in the field by the Royals. We'll get the full totals here. He did not strike anybody out. Hit a batter that Caden, Caden actually last inning. It's going to be Harris, Wolfram, and Bosselman here in the fifth inning to face Owen Simmons. Simmons, a junior, will pitch from the right side. <laughs> At least the ground saw. <laughs> Got vodka in that sippy or what? <laughs> Popcorn smells really good up here. That's all I know. <laughs> John says, You want some? <laughs> Pitch to Harris is called a strike. I tell you what, when you walk in the gym at Sonora High School, they have the greatest smelling caramel corn ever. If you ever want to try. Isn't that a country song? Pitches low to Harris. Count evens at one ball and one strike. Nobody on here in the bottom part of the fifth inning. Rams with a 6 nothing lead over Elmwood. Owen Simmons winds it up. His 1-1 pitch swung on, drilled center field. Center fielder can't see it. It would have been a base hit anyways. Looked like Vasquez like I can't see it. Now with the plate, number so Harris with a leadoff single here in inning number five. Lucas three for three. Gonna bring up Dalton Wolfram. Wolfram with an RBI single, his last plate appearance. Simmons. You're not drinking. You're not drinking good tequila. Pitches to the plate, deep fly ball left field by Wolfram. Caught out there by Landon Murray for out number one. Deep fly to left field for out number one off the bat of Dalton Wolfram. Jacob Overly will bat for Tenora. So Overly 
Batting in place of Bosselman. Bosselman, I think, is in the pen warming up down there. Is why Hunter's not batting. Yeah. Warmed up last inning. Called a strike to Overly. Picking up. They're going to be start having like tequila bars. Right, so let's play something Michigan. Yep, here we go. Runner at first, one out. Rams lead 6 nothing as they bat here in the fifth. Breaking ball, tap foul. Starting to get dark here at Tenor. Rain's not supposed to show up until after 7. What's 64? At first pitch here at Tenor High School. A couple minutes before 5 o'clock. Always says 5 o'clock on the schedule, but BR usually starts about 4.50. No balls, two strikes. The pitch coming to Overly from Simmons. That stays high. Throw down to first base. Back with the head first dive is Harris. Oh, yeah. Yep. They get a headache right away. Yep. Colton Bradford with the rifle down there at first base. One two pitch coming from Simmons to Overly. Runner stays put, swung on and missed. Strike three. Down goes Overly for out number two. Gonna bring up Riley Peters. Peters hitting for BJ Morlock here in the fifth. Peters with an RBI sacrifice fly in the second. Also with an RBI in the fourth. First pitch to Peters is ball. Runner right at first, Luke Harris now with two outs here in the bottom of the fifth inning. Rams up by six, six nothing. Owen Simmons on the relief of Jamie Palmer. From the stretch, pitch to Peters is ball two. Coach Anders coaching at first, Coach Renelet coaching at third for the Rams. Score 2 0, and what is 0 2. Next Rams game, I believe, is Thursday here versus Poldy. 2 0 pitch, Peters, ground ball, first base side, scooped up by the first baseman. Andrew Holland steps on the bag for out number three. Rams go in order. Well, actually, they didn't, well, they got one. Got a hit, leadoff hit by Luke Harris. No runs, one hit, no errors. Rams leave another after five here at Sonora High School. That group field on the drop zone pizzeria scoreboard. Sonora six and Elmwood nothing. We have a pitching change and we'll tell you all about that right after this. The Fire and Stone Tavern in Defiance is anything but basic. In 2021, the Fire and Stone Tavern was voted to have the best pizza in the area. Now, in 2022, they've been voted as the best burgers around. Firestone Tavern is the area's go-to for wood-fired pizza, amazing appetizers, and so much more. Chef Aaron and his staff are here to serve nothing but the best. No plans after the big game? Stop out for ice-cold drinks and all the games on TV you can ask for. Our back room and patio are available for events like birthdays, corporate lunches, parties, and much, much more during the week with a 25-person minimum. Located at 211 Carpenter Road at the Eagle Rock Golf Course. The hours of operation are Monday through Friday, 2 p.m. to 11 p.m. And Saturday and Sunday, 11 a.m. to 11 p.m. Give the Firestone Tavern a call, 419-785-4015, or order online at firestonetavern.com. Firestone Tavern wishes the best to all the Tenora teams. Back at Sonora High School with pitching change. Hunter Bosselman comes on in relief of Eli Plasman. Plasman worked the first five innings, did not allow a run, allowed just three hits. Rams did not commit any errors, and Plasman left four on base. Eli struck out four and walked just one, as far as I can tell. So Bosselman on in replacement of Plasman here to start the top of inning number six. Elmwood will send two, three, and four hitters against Bosselman. And Brewster, Bradford, and Holland. Now batting. Peters on at first base for the Rams. Peters, Harris at second, Radzik at short, and Ward at third. Outfield, still Mosier in left, Gus Weiler in center, and Connor Wolfram is in right for Coach Reynolds Rams. Bosselman winds it up first pitch to Ambrusters fouled off first base side out of play. Rams scored two in the second and four in the third. 
and leads 6 nothing. Check swing, it's called strike two to Ambrose to Bradford and Holland to follow. Tapper right back to the mound, past the pitcher. Razik scoops it up, fires over to first base in time to get Ambrose to for out number one. Razik, another one. Similar to Mossbarger, you're not going to get too many things by Caden Radzik out there at short. Now batting number 17, Colton Bradford. Colton Bradford is going to step in for Elmwood. Bradford 0 for 2. That's from the right side. Breaking ball fouled off first base side. Sophomore Bosselman pitches from the right side. Pitched in game one in the Rams' Victory over at Macomb. Bosselman winds it up. Oh, one pitch. High ball. One one ball and one strike. One out. Nobody on for the Royals. They trail 6 nothing as they bat here in the top of the sixth inning. Game moving along rather quickly, actually. Strike two call. Catches the outside corner. First official game here at Groove Field, high school-wise. JV's played a couple games. Line shot by Taryn Ward into left field for a base hit. Ward kind of gave it the old ole. If it gets in my glove, that's great. If not, I like my face the way it is. Up to the plate, number 16. Bradford on it first with a smash by Ward at third. Going to bring up Andrew Holland. Holland, one for two, singled in the fourth. Runner at first for Elmwood, one out. They trail 6 nothing here in the top of the sixth inning. Bosselman from the stretch comes to the plate. Breaking ball, nice pitch, catches the outside corner for strike one. Is that it, Andrew? Try and catch a score over there at the softball field for you. We're just going to take a look. Five nothing Bulldogs. Pitch a little blooper right in front of Mosier and left. Back to back single. Bradford stops at second. Holland on at first. So Lady Rams trail five nothing over there to Coach Parrish and the Bulldogs. Coach Meyer comes has a brief conversation with the home plate umpire. Wicker's going to bat for Sterling. As I said earlier, Wicker is probably, the, this is his personal opinion, of course, Wicker is probably the best quarterback at the high school level that I've seen in quite some time. Pure pocket passer can actually run when needed. This is unfortunately the Rams defense saw in the playoff game over there. Bosselman's pitch to Wicker, deep drive. Right field, Connor Wolfram out there makes a great catch. Runner from second tags up. Almost looks like he left just a bit early. We'll see what the Rams appeal at, but Connor Wolfram with a nice snag out there in right field. The drive off the bat of Hayden Wicker. Wicker took the first pitch, served it to right field. Wolfram with a nice running catch, fell to one knee, fired back to the infield. Tagging up and going to third was Bradford. Holland stayed on it first. Two outs now. Runners at the corners for Elmwood. They trail 6 nothing as they bat here in the sixth. Mason Oliver steps in. Oliver over 2. Like I said, Wickard and Oliver quite one-two punch for Elmwood football this past season. Coach Bishop over there. A heck of a, heck of a year. Bosselman comes to the plate. Outside corner strike called. The Rams defense actually kept that that high that high scoring offense pretty much had the cap on them through three quarters over at Elmwood and uh, totally just kind of exploded unfortunately. Oh one pitch to Oliver strike two same exact spot Bosselman throwing darts out there. Mason Oliver digs back in from the left side of the plate. No balls and two strikes. Runners at the corner. <laughs> no, just a little bit low. Tried to hit the same exact spot. 
<laughs> That's a ball, one ball and two strikes, two outs. Bradford on at third, Holland on at first for the Royals. Bosselman's one, two to the plate. Ground ball, shortstop side. Radzik fires over to Harris at second in time to get Holland. Elmwood threatens. They do not score for the Royals here in inning number six. No runs, two hits, no ram errors, two left on, and a all-star catch out there by Connor Wolfram to save the day after five and a half here at Groove Field at Tenora High School. Drop Zone Pizzeria scoreboard shows the Tenora Ram six and the Elmwood Royals nothing. We'll be back right after this time out here on Tenora Rams Live. Getting better together is our goal for you and your family at Fairchild Family Chiropractic. Here, we are focused on getting our patients to achieve long-term wellness just beyond short-term symptom relief. At Fairchild Family Chiropractic, we do this by working closely with you and personalizing each treatment plan. Now open and accepting new patients. Come see Dr. A.J. Fairchild at 100 Stadium Drive. Call 419-576-5070 to schedule your appointment or book online at fairchildfamilychiro.com. Dr. Fairchild, a proud Tenora alum, says go Rams. Back to the action on Tenora Rams Sports Live. Back at Sonora High School here at Groove Field, heading into the bottom part of inning number six. The Rams with a 6 nothing lead over the visiting Elmwood Royals. Elmwood coached by first-year coach Derek Meyer, who's the brother of Chad Meyer, who the field is in honor of. They said, talking to the Myers dad before the game, almost 13 years to the day that the field and the scoreboard out there was named for Chad, who unfortunately passed away on May 7th, 2010 because of cancer. He played for the Rams 2003 to 2006. So Coach D. 